When's the last time that you saw a Portuguese restaurant? The food in Portugal is without a doubt exceptional. The quality of ingredients and culinary traditions are very rich in Portugal. But why have they not become as popular as their neighbors Spain, France, and Italy? Chances are, you probably can't even name a Portuguese dish. But what if I told you that Americans eat Portuguese food every day without knowing it? In fact, the Portuguese introduced some of the most important ingredients in European, Indian, and other Asian cuisines. Portugal's rich culinary traditions change the entire culinary world. We all know French, Italian, and Spanish food very well, but some of the staple ingredients that make up these foods would not exist if the Portuguese didn't bring them to Europe in the first place. In the United States, there is an overwhelmingly diverse amount of food options from every culture in the world just about. So let's get into some of the Portuguese foods that Americans eat more regularly than they think. Not too long ago, I was at a restaurant eating fish tacos here in Portugal, and I asked the server if the tacos were fried or grilled. And she said they are tempura style. And I said, tempura like Japanese? And she smiled at me and says, no, tempura like Portuguese. This is the famous Portuguese peixinhos da horta. If you've ever been to PF Chang's, you probably recognize these deep fried green beans. I pulled out my phone to see the origin of tempura, and sure enough, the Portuguese brought it to Japan in the 16th century. What were the Portuguese doing in Japan in the 16th century? In 1543, three Portuguese travelers aboard a Chinese ship drifted ashore into Japan. They were the first Europeans in Japan. The Portuguese remained in Japan until 1639 when they were banished because of their Christian beliefs. Wow, I had no idea that the Portuguese brought tempura to Japan. Crazy, right? So next time you're at a Japanese restaurant eating sushi and you have deep fried shrimp, remember that you're eating food of Portuguese influence. These Hawaiian sweetbreads are all over the United States in large grocery stores like Walmart and Costco. Portuguese immigration to Hawaii began in 1878 when laborers from Madeira and the Azores migrated there to work in the sugarcane plantations. By the end of 1911, nearly 16,000 Portuguese immigrants had arrived. The Portuguese immigrants from the Azores brought with them this sweet bread that would become the Hawaiian sweet roll we know today. It is now considered a quintessential dish in Hawaiian cuisine and is widely consumed throughout the United States. It is also very popular amongst Portuguese Canadians, especially in the Toronto area. And while we're talking about Hawaiian culinary traditions, it is important to mention that huli huli chicken, one of the classic Hawaiian barbecue dishes, was invented by Ernesto Morgado, a second generation Portuguese American that was using his mother's Portuguese recipe. Now, this isn't a food, but you can thank the Portuguese for the ukulele as well. It was inspired by the original Portuguese tiny guitar, the cavaquinho. This is probably going to be the most debated one on this list. Most people believe that the churro originated in Spain, but some debate that it was actually founded in China from a pastry called Yuxiao. Much debate that Portuguese explorers brought Yuxiao back when it had visited China, and it evolved into the star-shaped dessert that we know today. From there, it gained popularity throughout Spain. Today, you can find churros all over Portugal and my favorite, farturas, which are just plain without chocolate or cinnamon. They are delicious the way they are plain. Now, these are all over the United States in bakeries and served as a dessert in Chinese restaurants. In Portugal, they are called pastel de nata and they are incredible. If you go to the right place, this flaky, buttery crust will crunch when you bite into it, and it's what dreams are made of. Now, even though Portuguese explorers have a long history with China, these actually weren't introduced into China until the 1940s when they quickly spread to Hong Kong after World War II. I'm obsessed with these things and should probably go to an egg custard tart addicts anonymous group. 
In Portugal, they were apparently created by monks in a monastery, and the recipe has been safeguarded and kept a secret ever since. You can still get the original pastry in Belang. While Morocco is the largest exporter of sardines in the world, and canning fish originated in France in the 1700s, sardines are very important to the Portuguese culture, so much that Lisbon actually has a sardine festival every year. In fact, two fish that I think of when I think of Portugal is the codfish, as they call it, bacalhau, or the sardine. In fact, before I knew about Portugal's codfish obsession, I certainly knew about their sardine obsession. Canned and fresh sardines are a Portuguese delicacy, and they are much more delicious than you would think if you are afraid to try them. They have become one of my favorite snacks, and they are incredibly nutritious and healthy. Now, the Portuguese certainly did not invent tea or marmalade. However, they did introduce it first to Europe, and specifically the royal English family. In 1662, Queen Catherine of Bragança, Portugal, left Lisbon to embark for England. She married King Charles II and brought various Portuguese influence to England. This ties in with Portuguese being in Japan in the 1500s, the Portuguese were the first European people to know about the use of tea. They were also the first to introduce it to Europe. In fact, the Gogiana tea plantation in the Azores is the oldest and largest tea plantation in all of Europe that is still operating today. And to accompanying her tea, Katarina received oranges from her mother, which she prepared a jam to accompany her tea. The story goes that she made a sweet orange jam, which would later become an English tradition. So when you think about the English afternoon tea, or you are having some bread and butter with jam, remember that it was the Portuguese queen of Braganza that made this popular in Western culture. Now, the origin of fish and chips is highly debated. It is widely believed that fish and chips were introduced to the UK by Spanish and Portuguese Jewish immigrants when the Catholic kings expelled them from the territory in the late 15th century to avoid religious conversion to Judaism. These immigrants prepared fried fish in a manner similar to pescado frito, which is coated in flour and then fried in oil. Today, it's also very popular in the United States, especially in coastal regions like Seattle and New York, but you can find them almost anywhere on menus today. A plant from the Americas that conquered the world. The Portuguese are responsible for introducing Europe, India, and the rest of Asia to this spicy pepper. Imagine what Indian and Chinese food would be like without this spicy chili pepper. But I know what you're thinking. The chili pepper is not from Portugal at all, which is very much true. However, you can't denounce the influence of the Portuguese bringing this chili pepper around the entire globe. Ironically, Portuguese food is typically not very spicy at all. But you can always find the Piri Piri hot sauce that was originally produced by Portuguese explorers in Portugal's former Southern African territories that then would spread to other Portuguese domains. It is important to note that a lot of the history mentioned in this video overlooks the barbaric and terrible history of slavery associated with the spice trade. You see, Portuguese were responsible for discovering 70% of the world previously unknown to the rest of Europe. But many of Portugal's discoveries were never made official because they were too small to dominate, colonize, and defend against the other European powers of the time. Introduced to Goa in the 15th century along with Portuguese explorers, the word vindaloo is a garbled pronunciation of the popular Portuguese marinade, vinho de alhos, which consists mainly of wine and garlic. 
This is a very typical marinade for cooking fish and different types of meat in Portugal. However, at the time, there wasn't much wine in India, so they used vinegar. In the near future, I will be making a video about my favorite Portuguese cuisine here in Portugal. You will not want to miss it. As you can see, Portuguese cuisine has influenced the entire world and they haven't really gotten a lot of credit for it. It's definitely very underrated and if you do come to Portugal, make sure to try a lot of the amazing dishes they have to offer here. If you want to see more videos about Portugal, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. I'll be posting videos like this every single week. My name's Dave in Portugal and we'll see you next time.